what up YouTube, this is Supercharged iOS, and this is my full review of the G-Box Midnight MX2. This review is going to cover everything from XBMC to benchmark statistics and Wi-Fi performance, as well as how the device performs overall. Now I've had this device for about a week, and I've pretty much done everything there is to do with it as far as average everyday use of the device goes. The first thing we did was a benchmark test with Antutu Benchmark so that we could get an idea of the exact performance of the device by the numbers. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the results as you can see 11,518 which isn't the best but it isn't the worst either. And for what we use the device for, downloading apps from the Google Play Store and streaming from XBMC, this device is well capable of those things. So we'll go ahead and click over to details and show you exactly what was tested. You can see right here some of the numbers of the final score of the test of the RAM as well as the CPU. Scroll down a little bit more. This is the Mali 400 graphics processor unit, 2D and 3D tests. Now the G-Box Midnight MX2 runs 720p currently, but there is an update. I'm in touch with the Matricom, and they said that they are definitely going to be sending us an update soon. So whenever the update is available, since the G-Box is one of the very few devices that you can do an over-the-air update, you have no problem. All you have to do is go to the OTA update application on the device, and you can update simply just by clicking on it and clicking on available update. So, and when that is when that time comes, I'll definitely be making a video to make you guys let you guys know that it's available, and the device will then run in full 1080p. All right, so here's some more details about the device. You can see right here, Matricom, the manufacturer, the model, G-Box Midnight MX2. And you can see the AmLogic hardware, Android 4.2.2, total storage 5.33 gigabytes. But remember, it's not going to have the full 8 gigabytes because you have to take an account for the software and the firmware and, and all pre-installed applications, including XBMC. So I'll go right here show you a little bit more about it. You see two cores, dual core, ARM Cortex A9 processor, GPU graphics processor unit, Mali 400 MP, and I'm currently using 11 to 17 in, in this range of the percentage. It goes up and down, it varies. And you can see core one and two, it's got a pretty good balance of the power. So, and it goes high up, it's high up to 1.51 gigahertz, which isn't bad. Like I said, it's going to definitely be powerful enough to push XBMC with no problem. Now let's test the device's download and upload speeds. And a lot of this, the results are going to depend on how fast of an internet connection you have. And you see 11.31 download speed. And now we'll check the upload speed. 1.74. So not bad on both counts. And my internet speed is, is a pretty good speed. I'm, I'm on about the middle level. So it could be better if you did have the full, the max package of internet service. I would imagine you would get a higher score than that, but mine's like the middle level, which is, I think, what most people get, and you can see 11.31 megabytes per second. This is a fairly decent score, and you're going to be able to download most apps from the Google Play Store with no problem, and this will definitely allow you to stream from XBMC with no problem. And this device has a great Wi-Fi chip inside. Unlike some of the other devices that I've tested, I was able to stay connected, and when I did have a problem with Wi-Fi, I found it was usually on my end and not the devices. The Bluetooth feature also works good for audio. Not sure about keyboards, though. In my experience, the best keyboards are USB. Whether mini keyboard or standard, the 2.4 gigahertz is far more reliable for this kind of device. And if you want, you can check out the Logitech keyboard. And also Matricom makes a keyboard as well for their device that you can buy separately 
or for an additional $15 when you purchase the G-Box Midnight MX2. This remote comes with the device and it works great. It has a lot of the buttons that you'll need for XBMC, like this button right here, the menu button. That's a very important button right there because you'll need that so that you can refresh repos and add-ons and stuff like that, bring up your context menu and add to your favorites. It's very useful to have that button. Also, you have a cursor option. You can just hit right there and you can put the mouse cursor on the screen so that you can navigate around with these until you get you another keyboard or either some sort of mouse that you would want to use with this device. As far as gaming goes, you should have no trouble on the G-Box Midnight MX2. I don't have a gaming remote control so that's compatible with this device, so I'm not really going to be able to show you much gameplay. Neither did Matricom send me a remote for gaming, so I'm not really going to give you much of a demo. But I did download this game, Dead Trigger 2, so that I can start it up and just show you that it does start up with no problem. So it seems to me like uh, that there's since there's no lag in the startup or the theme music or anything like that, it should be just fine. You shouldn't have any problems gaming on this device. All right. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit back. And as you can see, you can look around. Usually when a game is going to lag and, and have trouble, you can tell by the theme music will start to lag or either some of the graphics will, will have some lag effect. But we don't see any of that, so that tells me that this game would really work smooth and this device will probably work for most games. All right, and now for the reason that most of you are interested in this device to begin with the XBMC that comes pre-installed and also you'll see I'll show you something else that's really awesome about this device just go to system settings and as soon as you get this device turned on you don't even have to worry about installing any repos you just go to add-ons and get add-ons and there you'll see all of the most popular add-ons there and they're all ready to go I mean that's one of the better features of this device. I mean, I, I, I was really shocked to see that because I haven't seen that yet on any other device. So that's a big plus. I know a lot of you don't feel like messing around with adding repos and adding sources and all that. With this device, you won't have to do any of that. It's all ready to go. So let's go over to the YouTube add-on and I'll go ahead and launch one of my videos and show you how good a quality it is. And you can see it loads up the results rather fast. Now I'll go ahead and check this one out. Start from beginning. And we'll pick 720p. And you notice it started up pretty fast. And I have the sound turned down just so it doesn't interfere with this video. But you can see on your screen, everything is playing just fine. I'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit to show you. There you go, all the way up to one minute and something, 2.15. So you can see that it fast forwards with no problem. We're all the way at three minutes. So XBMC works rather good. I'm not going to start up any movies or anything like that on any of the other add-ons because of copyright reasons. But as you can see, everything works just fine on XBMC. So I'll go ahead and stop the video from playing in the background. And we'll go ahead and exit out of XBMC. And the gripes that I have about this device is I could not, no matter how hard I tried, get the AirPlay feature to work with my iPad and iPhone. Now, I don't know if that's something on Apple's part that they're blocking the communication between an Android device and Apple device. So I'm not sure, not, I don't think I can hold that against Matricom for that error, but the flaw that I do have a problem with that is all on Matricom 
is the fact that this device is still 720p, still waiting on that 1080p kernel update. And as soon as it's available, be on the lookout for that video. And I'll be showing you guys how to get it and letting you know that it's available and show you exactly what you need to do to update to that 1080p kernel so you can enjoy full 1080p XBMC. Other than that, there's really nothing else that I don't like about this device. The over-the-air updates definitely a plus. The rooted software is awesome. I mean, there's not many devices that'll come pre-rooted, so that was great. All right, so on the scale of one to 10, I'd have to give the G-Box Midnight MX2 an eight because of the fact that it comes with XPMC pre-installed and not only pre-installed, but pre-configured with the most popular repos. So all you have to do is go click down the list and click on each add-on you want to install one by one. So that's definitely a plus. Also, another big bonus is the fact that you get pre-rooted software in this device. So you don't have to worry about going and searching for the rooted firmware and installing it and all that other stuff, flashing it. It's just a bunch of inconveniences. This device is just fresh out of the box and it's ready to go as soon as you get it. I'd like to thank Matricom for sending me this awesome device for my review. Tell me what you guys think of this device in the comment section below. And if you want to purchase this device, there will also be a link in the description to take you over to Matricom's website where you can check this device out and decide for yourself if it's the right one for you. All right, this is Supercharged iOS. This was my full review of the G-Box Midnight MX2. I hope this video was pretty helpful. Please like my page at facebook.com forward slash charged iOS. And you can also follow me at twitter.com forward slash charged iOS. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.